Hello everyone, Meanspeed here with another Renegade Line video. It's been about four weeks since I covered the game in any way, so this video will have, you know, a fair amount of information in it. So, yeah, today I'm going to be talking about the weapon cards, the fourth and fifth Q&As, the resident 3D character model, as well as some, you know, a few miscellaneous things I spotted that weren't properly addressed in regards to members of Raw Vengeance. So, starting with the weapon cards, and basically these were images that gave certain stats on weapons such as magazine sizes, firing modes, and reload times. Now, I personally thought it would have been more interesting to show us small gameplay clips of each weapon, um, and to do tests on the guns to show damage over distance and stuff like that by having an enemy stand still while the user moved to certain ranges to test, uh, much like many people did with weapon tests in Battleford Heroes. But I suppose on the other hand, some stats wouldn't be as noticeable in a video, as opposed to being, you know, clear on paper, unless the gameplay was analysed pretty well. Um, yeah, there were only eight weapon cards, and that's because there were only eight weapons officially revealed on the forums um, at that time. But surprisingly, the weapon thread with those eight weapons still hasn't been updated with more, even after all this time, which was actually, um, it was actually, I think, when I last made a video on this, so probably like a month or something. So either those aren't finished yet, or Raw Vengeance don't want to give away too much. Maybe they're keeping a few weapons as surprises um, for the Alpha uh, or another video, but um, I don't know. Um, and I just adjusted my headset there, so you might notice a difference, I don't know. But um, yeah, it's also worth noting that you can see a factor called damage variance on the weapon cards, which basically means um, sometimes your weapon uh, would do more damage uh, to someone, other times it would do less damage, so no damage was set. Um, and as soon as I saw this, as soon as I saw it was going to be a feature in the game, I immediately thought it was a bad decision, since I believe a competitive game shouldn't come down to, or even have elements of, random timing, luck, and RNG, no matter how small they are. Um, you know, it should be down to game knowledge and skill instead, and thankfully a lot of people in the community were in favour of the notion that damage variance wasn't the best choice. Um, and eventually Royal Vengeance decided to remove damage variance based on, you know, community feedback, and I'm glad excuse me, um, excuse me again, um, you know, because it's always nice to see, you know, developers look at feedback and make changes in relation to that feedback. Moving on to the fourth Q&A now, and I'm just going to pick out some highlights and, you know, the things I thought were most interesting and good to know. So to start, there won't actually be weapons for healing, but there will be abilities or talents, as they call them, that are dedicated to healing. And all of the classes will have a way to heal themselves in a way that heals them over time until they take damage. So pretty similar to a bandage from BFH. So it's something you want to do out of the fight and, you know, when you're behind cover and stuff like that. Um, we found out that melee weapons won't just be standard knives. They'll actually be pretty diverse. And the developers even said a shovel weapon is possible. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, we'll be able to swim in the game. Uh, which I was actually wondering ages ago when water was first shown in screenshots and videos as well as when the wooden dam was shown um, When it was shown around a lot of water But this won't be an option until after the game is released and it's not actually a priority So I don't know what this means for the current water on the map So when we play the alpha if it'll be removed if it'll be at you know, like an out-of-bounds area uh, We can't get to um, You know if we'll die instantly when touching the water or if the game will just bug out or something um, but, you know, I'm not sure. These are just a few possibilities. Um, Easter eggs will be in the game, but we don't know what they'll be and what they'll be referencing. Though we do know they can count as environmental hazards um, and can make you take damage, as well as proper environmental hazards, um, such as maybe fire or saw blades that um, can basically um, come to life from previous objects we've seen. Uh, full damage was also confirmed, and even though it seemed obvious, we never actually saw it in a video or got information on it, in, you know, previous to this video, as far as I know. So, yeah, uh, we already knew that the teams will be 8v8. However, it was said that server owners can actually tweak their servers to allow 1v1s and other varying numbers with 8v8 being the maximum amount for the meantime. Um, it wasn't stated whether or not this feature was allowed just for a fun or in ranked type server when nothing counts, though. Which would be interesting to know since people might actually abuse the system in a ranked game and get, you know, lots of points and XP by fighting against one specific person that they know um, or something like that. I mean, some people are going to do it. I mean, I can see it happening, but um, yeah. 
Finally, seasonal changes to maps are apparently going to be a thing based on how well the Kickstarter goes and obviously what resources become available to the developers based on that. But there were already things like this in previous updates, such as the snow map screenshots. So I don't know why the resources aren't available to developers right now, but I guess that might have been in regards to other map changes and conditions, but I'm not sure. The fifth Q&A was focused on vehicles and cosmetics. And, you know, once again, I'll just pick out stuff that stood out the most to me um, so yeah we'll actually get vehicle skins as well as weapon skins which appear when you enter a vehicle and they will disappear when you exit one and I, obviously I'd assume other people can see the vehicle as well while you're inside it I actually speculated whether this would be an option in the game ages ago in a BFH video uh, I actually had a gold jeep skin in that video um, so it's nice to know this will be possible there's still only one emote in the game, which is the Bullhorns emote, which was actually shown about nine months or so ago. So that's very slow progress emote wise, but I can only assume other animations and features took priority. And a lot of emotes aren't really necessary for the alpha at least. So yeah, there won't be any copyright issues. What with the assets looking similar to BFH, uh, as Royal Vengeance actually contacted various lawyers to find out that information, though I'm pretty sure they already knew a bit about it beforehand anyway before going ahead and you know deciding to make the game and all of that but um yeah video of the week a popular event from Battleford Heroes will actually be a thing in Renegade Line as well which is a great event that showcases creative and enjoyable videos um that people make of the game it's not known what the next alpha key contest will be but there will actually be more of them you know it's not just that the crosshair contest was the only one uh, there will be more um, and I'm going to assume there might be weapon skin design contests based on the fact that Royal Vengeance sort of encouraged people to submit their art and skin ideas when the eight weapons were revealed. Um, and they were actually revealed in the art section of the forums. So, yeah. Uh, and possibly clothing design contests as well, perhaps when we have both 3D models of the base characters from each side. Um, that would be pretty interesting. We can rent weapons for a limited time using in-game credits and it will be for a good enough time you know, for you to make a decision as to whether you want to purchase the weapon for real. Um, during the testing phases there won't be any class restrictions uh, you know, in terms of how many you can have on one side. But after feedback and playtest some things could change and um, excuse me, personally I think it might end up changing because you know, excuse me again. Um, yeah, the game is going to fit a competitive vibe. So, you know, class stacking is either a very bad strategy for a team or it makes for a very unbalanced and unenjoyable match. So that's why I think it might be changed. Now, before I get to the last bit of official news, I just want to say a few things here that I spotted regarding the Raw Vengeance team. So first of all, RV Danny, the web developer who made both the site and the forums, actually isn't a part of Raw Vengeance anymore. Um, this change wasn't mentioned in a thread or anywhere else, but I noticed it when I saw that he didn't have a black background on his posts anymore. Um, and he actually had a name change, um, and it says it in his signature as well. I mean, you can see here that I quoted him a long time ago, probably a day or so after the forms were released. And this is still the same account replying back to me from that long ago. So it's clear a name change is in place. Um, but yeah, whatever the reason for leaving was, I can only wish him the best in his future endeavours and he did an amazing job on the site and the forums. Uh, the question now is though, who's going to replace him? What happens to the pages that haven't been shown yet, such as the profile pages? Um, and will we ever get a search button on the forums? I mean, I don't know any of these answers, but it would be nice to know them. Also, Fictio, a community moderator, now has a new account and he's he got actually got a black background now, so he's a member of Raw Vengeance. Once again, this wasn't announced in a news update and there wasn't like a thread explaining this properly, but he's actually the new community manager taking over from iScratch. Um, I'm not sure if this means iScratch is leaving or if he's just changing roles within Raw Vengeance, but um, if he is leaving, then I'll say the same thing to him, which is that, you know, he did a great job. Um, with interacting with the community and answering questions. Finally, we got to see a 3D model for the resident character as well as a hitbox display. Uh, the 3D model of the resident is similar to this 3D model that was shown. Um, I'm not sure if it was actually shown on the forums, um, but yeah, though obviously there are some changes and this fully clothed model might actually be a wicked and not a resident, but I'm not sure. The hitbox information basically shows that there are some small spots that you can't actually damage people on. 
Um, and we also found out that while there's a possibility for more weak spots later down the line, currently only headshots will do more damage. So guys, that's about it for Renegade lineup to now. Uh, hopefully I covered everything as best as I could and didn't miss that much out. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.